Okay, so this is a video to help those of you who are implementing a Keyclock account theme and I've chosen the multi-page uh, variation. Uh, for context in Keyclockify, you can choose between the single page implementation, which is the one that comes by default with Keyclock, and uh, you can also implement a multi-page uh, account theme, which is much more akin to the logging uh, theme um, and this is a fork that the Kiklokify organization maintain. But uh, the multi-page uh, account theme have some limitation and is a bit bare bone and in this video what I want to show you is how you would expand uh, its capability um, to match the functionality that you can get in the in the single page one. So, uh, to show you, I'm uh, just going to start uh, Keyclock if I start uh, Keyclock. Just going to start um, Docker container. Uh, here I am on the branch that uh, I uh, document in the yeah, multi page. There is a branch of the starter with some setup. Um, and here I'm, I'm on this branch, so uh, just for context here, we have a multi-page application, so the NPX Kicklockify initialize account theme has already been done, and we have added some uh, extra extra things that I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you about right now. So let's log in to our account theme, test user, password, one, two, three, uh, sorry, password, one, two, three, all right. And let's navigate to the account theme. So first thing you may notice with the account theme is um, there is no client side validation on the form. And uh, the form here, all the attributes are hard coded. So, for example, if you go um, here in update profile, you can see that uh, on this Kicklock uh, configuration, we have added the user profile attribute, which is favorite pet, and the user can select uh, which is his favorite pet. But here in the in the account, you can't uh, see this extra attribute. So um, here I'm gonna explain how you can extend this form to add uh, client side validation and the missing attributes. Um, but before I start, I've already explained this in uh, other video, but um, it's not necessary to redo this work and to update this. You can just add a button. I've just added it here that redirect to the logging update profile page. Uh, here you have everything that is already this, using the same form that you're using for the for the logging theme. So in my opinion, it's the more sustainable approach. But any, anyway, uh, I'm going to explain if, if you want to have a standalone account theme and improve this form, you can, you can do it. Uh, the trick here is to consume the REST API that is used in the single page uh, account theme. So the, the account theme that come by default with Keyclock, uh, it works uh, not with the KC context like the login does, but it fetches some data and uh, render form uh, uh, on the client side dynamically. And uh, even if you are using the multi-page account theme, you can still consume uh, this API. And here I can show you because I've, I've just done that and log, uh, log the, the data of the user profile. And you can see here you have the, all the attributes of the user, including favorite pet. Um, and the validators that uh, can be used for client-side validation. So here, there's the, the options possible for favorite pet, 
and um, yeah, the reg apps that you could have defined. And you also have the, you can also fetch all the uh, internationalization messages to, um, to localize strings like, for example, profile attribute favorite pet would be a favorite pet or a animal de compagnie favori in French. Um, so yeah, let, let's, let's dive in. So, um, the thing is, uh, if you want to consume the API, what you'll do is, uh, you install <clears throat> OIDC SPA or Kicklock.js, but Kicklock.js is much, much harder to use in this context. So I strongly recommend using OIDC SPA and, uh, you set up, you set it up, um, as uh, explained it in the documentation here, uh, but um, uh, there are some caveats. So you need to get the realm that is in the URL. So we get it. And you, uh, as client ID, you have to use the account console. And uh, here you can see I have uh, a case here, uh, I create OEDC SPA, the real one, only when I'm not in dev mode. This way uh, I can still use Storybook and test locally, um, even if uh, I'm not in a real uh, Kicklock instance. So yeah, so you set it up, uh, you say that auth is globally required because this is not an app where you can navigate when you're not logged in. This is a uh, fully shield behind authentication. So you set it to true so that um, you only have the, the API uh, for when the user is connected. Um, a public URL, uh, you set it to undefined. Um, so you don't have to create the, the public SSO file, which would require you to to set up some uh, uh, valid redirect URI and uh, some uh, web origins in the account console uh, client configuration. You don't want to, to do that. So uh, just set uh, public URL to undefined. This will uh, let you um, not have to rely on the silent SSO HTM file. And uh, well, the issuer URI is, uh, well, the origin slash realms and slash your realm that is provided in the URI. But now to the meat of it. So the client here, uh, I create a, a classic um, REST API client. So I will have my proxy for the fetch, um, the fetch uh, function. So it will be this, this authenticated fetch will be fetch, but I will inject some headers. Uh, the more important one being, of course, the authorization headers that will enable to, to fetch the, the API that is protected. And um, yeah, so here I have this get user profile and uh, I fetch the account API. So account, and I add the, the query param here, uh, user profile metadata true, and this will return uh, a user profile here with username, first name, last name, and all the user attributes, uh, the object that I showed you earlier. And um, here I have another endpoint to fetch the, the resources for the language of the user. And what I've done so that everything works still in, in Storybook here is I've created some mocks for the response to the API. So if I'm in dev mode, so in Storybook, uh, I will, uh, this will return some mock data so you can still work outside of Kicklock. And um, yeah, I've created a, a little React adapter. Um, so we have some neat hooks that we can use to to get those data in our components 
And here, so I've ejected the account page, which is, yeah, it's visible here, but like, as always, when you want to customize a page uh, at the component level, you'd see here. So this is the account.ftl page. So I've run, uh, I have run uh, npx, uh, kicklockify eject page, selected account and um, uh, account.ftl, and it have created this file. And here I have edited it to use my, my API uh, client here. So here I can get the user profile, get the, uh, the internationalization message. So I have a little fallback to know uh, while uh, this data is being fetched. Um, you can have a spinner, for example, if you if you want to give a feedback, but usually it's it's instant, so uh, you really shouldn't bother. And here I haven't done the actual work of uh, leveraging this this dynamic data to generate a form, uh, but uh, here in the user profile you have everything that you need uh, user profile uh, for generating a form. You can do a for each and uh, a, a map and generate uh, something and add some uh, some client validation with the attributes uh, validators. So yeah, but again, um, this is a lot of work when really uh, you can just add a button here uh, to update profile and it works just as well. So with your OADC S uh, SPA, you can have a function uh, go to auth server that will enable you to return to the logging pages with uh, a special intent that uh, Kicklock supports. So, all this is documented in uh, OEDC SPI uh, user account management here. There are some examples. So what I've done here is I've created a button that uh, go to the update profile. So this is what I've, sh I've shown here. So I've put a big or here because this is this. So consuming the API, generating a dynamic form or don't bo uh, not bothering and just adding a button that redirect uh, A, B, C, D, E, one, two, three, four. No, no, it's password, password, one, two, three. All right. So yeah, just not bothering and just doing this. Um, I had to type, type the password again, just because it, uh, was uh, a link for for some time but uh, if they directly navigate to this page they don't have to to enter the password again so yeah you have this and uh, you even have a feedback here uh, you can display a feedback uh, profile and changed and if I do a user uh, two for example uh, a profile successfully updated. So you can even uh, put a, a feedback that uh, the operation uh, was completed successfully. Uh, just using the back from out server um, thingy that is returned by OEDC SPA to return a different um, a feedback message. Um, and uh, yeah, there's also the button to delete uh, the account here. Um, so yeah, password one two three. Yep, I won't do it, but they can they can do it here. So yes, this this button, uh, even if you want to implement the form here manually. You can you, you you probably want to add it if if you want to enable your users to delete their account. Um, yeah, again, uh, just account uh, is deleting account is something that is not enabled by default on Kicklock, so you have to uh, you have to uh, do it 
uh, you have to enable it on your realm in the in the in the settings. Uh, it's explained uh, in the account management delete account. Uh, there is a key clock guide configuration if you want to enable this. So yeah, adding the button is is not enough. You also have to tweak the the key clock configuration. Yep. And uh, yeah, I've also um, in this fork that you, you can check out, you can, everything that I'm showing you here is uh, in the documentation. If you go in the multi-page, you can check out uh, this uh, branch of the, of the startup project and uh, you will have all this change so you will be able to explore the code uh, as needed. Um, and yeah, here in password, um, it's the same thing. So you can, you can pr uh, use the default, uh, which is um, the default. Let's go in Storybook. No, I can't, can't navigate here, of course. But yeah, password here. You have password, new password confir confirmation. But um, it's it's not great because you don't have the password policies. So, for example, if you have defined that the user must have uh, at least uh, three special characters or something like this. You can't uh, display this message uh, in real time. So it's um, and so it's it's best to not bother and just create a button to redirect to the to the to yeah to the page to to update the password here. And here you are in the logging page. So you have the KC context and you have the uh, password policies and in the default, uh, and so not email, not username. Um, so yeah, and, and this is implemented by default with the login page that comes with Keclockify. So you don't have to, to reinvent the wheel and uh, keep in mind that uh, in even if in the account v3, so the account SPA that comes with Kicklock, if you want to change your password, it does redirect to this page anyway. So this is not even a workaround. This is the the established way to update the user password. This to redirect to the to the login update password uh, page of the uh, the login theme. So. Yeah, uh, basically, I think that's it. Maybe I can show you that uh, thanks to the MOOC, uh, I can uh, still run the storybook here. And um, here in account, well, I, I haven't done much things with the, um, with the data, but you can see here I'm getting my MOOC data so I can still work. Uh, with the with the mug data of the the API, um, yeah, yep. Yeah. I think that's it. I hope it helps those of you who have uh, chosen the multi-page account theme. Don't hesitate to keep in touch if you have some some question on uh, on and you can reach out on Discord. Um, okay, bye.